The ability to manage colors and swatches is important in any application when dealing with the creation of visual elements. This lesson demonstrates the use of these tools within Flash Professional. So here we don't immediately see the swatches and color palette because they're in these little panels here. Let's expand this panel set out so that we can see the color and swatches in our application. So here we see swatches, and in order to use these, you'll notice that as I move my mouse cursor over this area, it either turns into an eyedropper or a paint bucket. The reason for this is that the eyedropper will allow us to choose a specific color, and notice as I choose different swatches, that my fill actually changes to that color. So if I select blue, it shows up as blue. If I select violet, it shows as violet. We can also choose the different gradients down here that have been created. And these here are the default gradients. If I use my paint bucket and click in here, you see that it creates a duplicate of whichever color I actually have selected at the time. So let's say I want to mix a new color. I can choose to create a solid color, a linear gradient, a radial gradient, or actually use a bitmap as a fill. Let's choose a solid color because that's the simplest. We can go through and sort of change the color using these different pickers here along with this slider. And here I'm going against RGB and you can choose each one of these. You can also go in and say, I know specifically that I want my reds to be 129. I can do that here. I can also input the hex value for the color I want. Or I can switch to hue, saturation, and brilliance mode, in which case I'm able to select colors in that way. So let's say I like this color and I actually want to save it. To do that, all I have to do is switch back to swatches and use that little paint bucket feature. So you can see right here before all our gradients, I can now recall this particular swatch whenever I want to. Let's have a look at some of these other options. So up here, I have the ability to switch my swatches to a black stroke and a white fill. I can also choose to just have no color whatsoever. And you'll notice here that I can also select none in this drop down box, and that gives us the same effect. Switching back to black and white, I'm also able to swap colors by using this little icon right here. And these little boxes here will switch between whether I'm editing the stroke color or the fill color. Let's have a look at gradients. I'm going to choose a linear gradient, and we can see that not only do we have this little color picker here, but we've also got our gradient array here, and I can add more keys to this array and adjust their colors until I get whatever suits me. All right, so that's a fairly complex gradient there. So we can also, when dealing with gradients, choose whether to have extend color, reflect color, or repeat color flow types. And you can see these little previews here that display how these are affected as they flow past element borders. So going back into swatches, I can create my gradient. So let's say I want to save this particular palette. I've saved all of these little swatches here, and they're just what I need, and they're what my the designers on my team need as well. It's very easy to actually save these off. We can go to the little menu option here, and you can see we have a whole bunch of different options for deleting swatches, duplicating them, adding, replacing, loading colors, and so forth. What we want to do is actually save these colors. So when we choose that, we can specify a file name for these. So I'll just call it colors. 
and it's going to save it as type of flash color set or .clr file. You can also save it as a color table, a .act file, but the default is CLR, and that'll work across Flash Professional. So now that we've chosen the name, let's go and save this to the desktop. All right, so now we've actually saved this swatch to the desktop. If I go in and actually reset, so let's load default colors here, and you can see all my little custom colors went away. So all I have to do is go to this menu up here, and then I can choose to either add colors to this set or simply replace all the colors with those from my swatch library. So I'm going to choose to replace, go to desktop, and we can see that here's my colors.clr file. And when I load that in, there are our custom swatches right there for us. So this has been an, an example of how to use both the color and swatches panels within Flash Professional CS6.